perspective. So please welcome Sherry Clark. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. I'm really pleased to be here today on behalf of my uh, colleagues, Dr. Peter Boxall and Dr. Irina Creed, to tell you about a new and what I think is a really exciting new project that was launched in March of this year called the Alberta's Living Laboratory Project. The central question of this project is really quite simple, and that is, can we create an incentive for private landowners to restore wetlands in exchange for a cash payment? And on the face of it, this is a really simple and pretty straightforward question. But the answer to this question is actually unbelievably complicated. And this answer is fraught with a number of different economic, social, and environmental issues. And it's these issues that we hope to uncover and explore and understand over the next couple of years. So some of you might be wondering, why wetlands? If we're going to take money and pay people in Alberta to restore ecosystems, why are we focused on wetlands? I'm an ecologist who studies wetlands, and so I think they're beautiful, amazing, incredible places. But I think anyone who's ever walked around a wetland can attest to the fact that these habitats are teeming with life. And per unit area, wetlands actually support more biodiversity than any other ecosystem on the planet. So they're incredibly important habitat for wildlife. In addition to that value that wetlands offer to wildlife and plants, wetlands also offer critically important ecosystem services to human communities. Things like climate moderation through carbon storage, water quality improvement of surface and groundwater, recharge of groundwater. All of these things offer direct benefits to human communities. But despite these valuable and important ecosystem services, wetlands have really suffered from negative social perceptions over the last century. And while these social perceptions about wetlands are improving very slowly, many people still see wetlands as wastelands. And because of that, the ecosystem services that these habitats provide are often overlooked and underestimated. And the result of that is that we have lost wetlands at an alarming rate across the world. Here in Alberta, it's estimated that upwards of 70% of wetlands in the central and southern portions of the province have been lost. 70% of wetlands is a significant number of wetlands. That's a startling number. And the majority of these losses can be attributed to agricultural land use. A lot of these losses have been historic. So over the last 100 years, we've been draining wetlands in this province to increase agricultural productivity. But as recently as the 1980s, the provincial government paid farmers to drain wetlands on private land. And while those losses on agricultural lands continue today, increasingly contemporary wetland loss in the province is being driven by urban land development. This image here is the city of Calgary, and it's estimated that between 80 and 90 percent of wetlands in the city have been lost. And as cities and towns in Alberta continue to grow and expand, those wetlands along the urban fringe are being filled in, and they're being replaced by constructed stormwater management facilities. And all of this loss since 1993 has occurred at the same time that we've had a wetland policy in this province that requires the compensation for the loss of that wetland habitat. And that compensation primarily takes the form of wetland restoration. So if I fill in a wetland under the provincial policy, I'm required to replace that habitat. And we haven't done a very good job of replacing habitat in this province under that policy. And we continue to lose wetlands in agricultural 
urban and industrial landscapes. And one of the biggest issues is that we don't have enough restoration sites. In fact, let me rephrase that. We have plenty of potential restoration sites. We've lost 70% of wetlands in this province. The difficulty of finding suitable restoration sites is that the majority of these restoration sites are located on private land. And it's very, very difficult to convince a landowner to restore a wetland that they've already drained. And so that gets us back to the central question that our research team hopes to address. And the big question is whether or not we can overcome these policy barriers by paying people to restore wetlands on private land. Can we create an incentive to restore more wetlands? And if we can convince people to accept a payment to restore wetlands on private land, the next big question is, how much do we pay? And that's a really complicated question. And I don't know the answer to that question because I can't log on to Kijiji and find what the going rate for an acre of wetland is. It's also complicated because what I may be willing to accept as a payment to restore wetlands on my property might be very different than what my neighbor expects to be paid because my opportunity costs and my nuisance costs for restoring that wetland are very different than my neighbor's costs. And so this heterogeneity in price is something that we're very interested in. And so a big focus of this project is price discovery. The other question that we have is if we have a limited amount of money, and we do, we don't have an unlimited budget to restore wetlands. If we have a limited budget, how do we target that money? What wetlands do we buy? And how do we focus our efforts to ensure that we get the best return on our investment dollar? And by return on investment, I don't mean necessarily that we want the greatest number of wetlands restored or the largest area of wetland restored. We're also interested in the quality of the wetlands that are restored and the potential environmental benefits that we would receive if we did restore those wetlands back onto the landscape. And so over the next few years, we're, we are going to be exploring these questions in the Nose Creek watershed, which is located in Southern Alberta near the city of Calgary. This watershed was selected as our study area because it experiences a broad range of different land uses. And the different pressures in this watershed are representative of what we see across Alberta. And that includes intensive agricultural production, ranching, and urban development. And we see this as a perfect opportunity to test uh, these questions and understand some of the barriers that exist to wetland restoration on private lands. So I've talked a lot about the importance of wetlands and, and why we want them back, but how in the world are we going to do this? Uh, the very first step that we need to take is to actually locate the drained wetlands in our study area. And in order to do this, we are creating a drained wetland inventory using state-of-the-art remote sensing methods. And for each drained wetland that we identify in the study area, we are then going to estimate the potential environmental benefits that we would receive if we were to replace that wetland or restore that wetland on private land. Once we know where each of those wetlands are, There we go. <laughs> we then need to recruit landowners who have drained wetlands because we need them to participate in our project. Without drained wetlands, we can't restore wetlands. And so we've developed a communication strategy to engage landowners in the Nose Creek watershed. And our communication strategy has two main messages. The first message is we can't do this alone. We need landowners who are willing to participate. And the second main message is that if landowners do participate, they will be compensated for their participation. And that compensation will be fair compensation. We're delivering these messages through a variety of different mechanisms. We have a project website. We also are, are active on social media. So if you are interested in following us, 
or cash for wetlands. We're also using more traditional uh, communication methods such as workshops and print materials and advertising. But a big question for us is what is fair compensation? And how do we go about discovering the price of what people are willing to accept as payment to restore a wetland? And to do this, we're going to use a market-based instrument called a reverse auction. And in a reverse auction, we have multiple sellers who are competing for the budget of a single buyer. And in our case, the single buyer is the university research team. And so landowners in the Nose Creek watershed who are interested in participating in the reverse auction will formulate a bid. So they will tell us what they want to be paid to give us access to their drained wetlands. Those landowners will submit those bids to us and our research team will evaluate those bids. And we're looking for drained wetlands that offer us the greatest environmental benefit for the lowest cost. And those are the drain wetlands that we are going to restore. And we will pay those farmers in exchange for them granting us access to those wetlands. Once those wetlands are restored, sorry, our team will develop methods to monitor those wetlands because we have predicted what we expect in terms of environmental benefits to be returned to the landscape. And we want to monitor those wetlands to see how good of a job did we do estimating those environmental benefits. So I mentioned earlier that this project, it, it just launched in March of this year. And so over the next seven months, we're focused on creating that drained wetland inventory. And next, early next year, in February of March, we hope to run a reverse auction. And in fall of 2016, we hope to restore the wetlands. Following that, we hope to monitor the wetlands for a minimum period of three years, but we hope to secure enough funding to make this a longer-term monitoring project. Ultimately, we really do hope that this project creates information and tools that can be used by a variety of different organizations to help improve decision making and to ultimately conserve and restore more wetlands on private land in the province of Alberta. And with that, I would like to take some time to acknowledge the project, uh, the organizations who have provided our project both funding and in-kind support, um, including Alberta Innovates. Without this generosity, this project wouldn't be possible. Thanks very much. So I, I can see from the timeline that you're sort of early on in the project, but I was struck by the fact that your uh, the sort of the pub, the information materials really sort of spoke to people's. Um, desire to be a leader, this isn't going to work without you, and the money was, was not actually a significant part of that. So do you have any sense, even as early on as you are, that in the end it will be people's goodwill that will dominate, or the fact that they'd uh, like to get some money for their drained wetland? Yeah, I think that's a really, it's a really interesting question, and I think that um, one of one of the things that we as a research team acknowledged early on is that uh, overcoming these negative social attitudes that I spoke about is, is a really difficult mm. thing to do. And so our ambition in this project is not to change the way people think about wetlands. It's to appeal to other, other things that might drive them to make that decision. And, and the idea of being a leader, um, leading by example, being compensated fairly for their participation. These are sort of the things that we decided to focus on rather than trying to convince them the wetlands were great and fantastic places, which they are. Um, but, but I think the, the, the payment is a secondary piece to that. And we do think that that incentive will bring people to the table in ways that that will engage them rather than just talking about attitudes about wetlands. Yeah, it's a variation on charitable donation where yes, money is exchanged, but you're doing it uh, because you believe in it. And it's a perfect reflection of what Art said, that it's no longer just about science. 
It's about many other aspects surrounding the science. Anyway, thank you very much, Sherry. It was really good.